I'll spare you that. <clears throat> I don't play very well. <laughs> that would be the flute. Yeah, yeah. Um, Native American flute. Uh, I want to start off this video with uh, different sounds. <clears throat> um, we think of these objects and these are considered healing modalities, objects, um, that all have sounds that heal us. And healers use these instruments to create a sound to heal. But do you know the one sound that is the most healing for each one of us? Do you happen to know what that sound actually is? You know, is it the singing bowl? Is it the gong? Is it the drum? What is the sound that resonates so deeply within our souls that heals us on different levels? Is actually the sound of your own voice. So in this video, when I am speaking, I'm actually healing myself. So in these times when we are not interacting as much as we would like with other people, especially someone like me who lives by myself, the best thing that we can do is talk to ourselves. Be crazy. <laughs> we are given permission to be crazy and talk to ourselves out loud at this time. Sing, read out loud to yourself, you know, passages, poems. And I think that this is such a beautiful reminder that we have everything within us to heal ourselves that we don't need to look outside of ourselves to any of these other instruments, to any of these other gurus, to any of these other modalities to heal ourselves. Healing always comes from within. And this is such a, an amazing opportunity if you choose to see it as that, that we have this time to just go within and heal ourselves. Um, so if you hadn't noticed, I've just been winging this. Um, I have been killing myself laughing <laughs> at myself in the last couple of videos. I, every time I look at them, I just, I crack up. And that's a very good thing. Um, I'm, I'm not, you know, in that judgmental mind. I'm just the observer. Um, and I thought, you know, oh, maybe I should be a bit more scripted and, you know, maybe I shouldn't show me turning on the camera and turning off the camera. You know, maybe I should learn how to edit these things and wouldn't it be nice if I could zoom in? And I thought, you know, that's not me. I'm not slick. I am just me in my studio. I'm the one that turns on the camera. I do not have a cameraman behind the camera <laughs> and I have to get up and turn off the camera and um, you know maybe things will change over time maybe I'll learn how to zoom in I don't know but I just want to be as authentic as possible and just you know this is just me being lighthearted trying to share um, trying to just reach out to people and say hey like how are you doing how are you taking care of yourself how are you indulging yourself at this time and uh, and please you know reach out to me if if you need uh, if you need anything just reach out to me and I'm I'm great emotional support so I'm a great listener not just a talker <laughs> and a laugher <laughs> so I want to uh, and another thing I want to sort of say too is when I was um, watching my last video, I kept referring to myself as artist. And I mean, I could also call myself, you know, um, woman, um, mother, grandmother, um, soul, 
soul sister. Um, it's just a term. And I don't, uh, it's not like I'm something special under that term. We all are born with creative spark. And we all express our creativity in many, many ways. Um, I just so happen to create visually and, you know, and, and other, uh, other things that I do. But it, it's by no means um, special. We are all creative sparks. And, you know, how do you express your creativeness? Is it through the way you prepare a meal for your family? Is it the way you brush your hair? And I don't. <laughs> Is it the way, you know, um, you play an instrument? Or any, you know, anything. We, we tend to think in very narrow terms about things. And instead of, you know, bringing things closer together, let's broaden them out. You know, so we're all artists. We're all creative sparks. We are all creating masterpieces here in our own way. I'm shocked at this piece because it's one of the few um, fiber art pieces that I still have in my possession. And I was shocked when I saw the date on the back of this piece because I made this piece in 2000 which means that this piece is 20 years old. <laughs> and that just blew me away. Uh, it, it's, and this actually, this is actually a pivotal piece and I didn't really think about that until now. Uh, this was one of the, the very first pieces that I made without a pattern. I have been sewing for my children for many, many years. I did make Halloween costumes, not from patterns, but, um, this was one of the first, I had been doing some quilting for a bit and I was using patterns and ideas from other people, but this was really the first piece that I created that um, I didn't use a pattern. So what I had done at that time was um, my, my three sons were very small because if you see some of their hands here, they're so, so tiny. And now, you know, they all tower over their mother, thank goodness. Um, so yeah, so I uh, took my family's hands and I traced all of our hands at that time and cut them out of fabric and uh, I wanted to create, you know, us all holding hands and the heart in the middle and in case you hadn't noticed, there is this heart theme about, you know, spreading the love, putting your heart flag out in your window, please. Um, <clears throat> so I had uh, woven this heart and now I forget the name of this piece. Threads that ties together, heart, heart strings that ties together, something like that. Um, so I, I wove these strips together to create this heart. And then I have each of our hands holding a strip from this, from this heart. And I think that this is really, really poignant at this time. At this time. <laughs> I so promised myself not to say that anymore, but lo and behold. Um, we are dreaming a new dream. We are we weaving the tapestry of life. Um, we are reweaving our own hearts and those ties that we're connected to. And how, how are you going to reweave your heart in this new age? There's a question for you. Um, I wanted to make this video shorter and I see that already I have extended the time that I you know, wanted to, to spend on this um, because I don't think you need to hear me for long lengths of time. But um, so the other thing I wanted to do um, so you could create this in paper very easily. And I know that families at this time, you know, you're looking for projects to do, but wouldn't it be lovely if you could create a family heirloom at this time to mark this time in, 
um, our century, this time that you're having with your families, you know, tracing everybody's hand and maybe all weaving together with paper, um, construction paper, junk mail, uh, the newspaper, whatever, and weaving a heart together. And you could glue that onto a piece of paper and cut a heart out of it and then put everybody's hands around it. Or you could maybe, you know, just cover your hands in paint and do something. Just mark this time. This is a very unusual time in our lives. This is something that your children are going to remember. Your everyone is going to remember this spring of 2020. And how are you going to represent that? Wouldn't it be lovely if you did represent that so that you could hang it on your wall and just think, yeah, yeah, we survived that. How cool is that? Do you remember back then? Yeah, we were worried, but yeah, it all turned out okay. One of the things um, I love, and you know, getting back to yoga and how my artwork all ties in, because this is this is me weaving together, you know, um, shamanism and uh, yoga and artwork and Reiki and and there's so many things that I have been um, accumulating all these tools in my tool belt, and I've been trying to figure out, you know, how are these things going to weave together, and here it is. And what a gift this is that I am able to indulge in something that I thought I'd always, I've always thought, oh, I want to do that. I want to videotape myself, but ah, I don't want to do that. And here I am, you know, I, it's like the call came and here I am, I'm on the camera and I'm just, you know, showing you who I am. <clears throat> Yoga. Um, I'm actually learning to teach Hatha Yoga and Hatha Yoga has to do more with postures but one of the yogas that I practice is Kundalini Yoga. Now there's a lot of you know uh, segregation in yoga that I'm not too keen on because <clears throat> yoga is yoga and it's for the betterment of the soul. So I don't think of you know Hatha over here and Kundalini over here and Bhakti and hot yoga and cannabis yoga and all this sort of thing, it's all coming together in a new tapestry. We're all, I think this is the new teacher, this is the new Aquarian teacher, is taking, you know, pulling our strings of yoga and weaving them together. So Kundalini Yoga. Um, in Kundalini Yoga, there's a lot of mantras and there's um, a lot of mudras. So a mantra has to do with sound. This is, you know, we're talking about sounds that are healing. So there are sounds that we can make with our mouth and each sound is a different healing note. Um, a mudra, now I had to laugh because <laughs> in my last video, what you know youtube i don't know how they figure it out but they they freeze you in a certain pose and i was going like this and this is actually um gyan mudra but i was talking about the inner tube of a doggy poop bag <laughs> so how cool is that okay so um i want to teach you the curtain kriya and um again these are i know these are kind of foreign set of foreign words, um, but they have very simple meaning to them and very lovely meaning to them. So kirtan um, is a song, it's a praise, you know, like any sort of song that we have. And we need song at this time, we need sound. Uh, kriya is an action. So it's kind of like your pose, you know, your practice, you know, moving through certain poses. Um, so this is like song in action. And how beautiful is that as a healing? Now, um, this particular mantra, um, they, they have done studies on this. The people who practice for longer than 11 minutes every day, it was actually 12 minutes, I, I believe, um, they actually slowed down Alzheimer's. So this is really, really good for your brain. So there's four sounds. And with each sound, there is a meaning, 
but there's also what we call a mudra, and so it's the change of the fingers and the hands, okay? So the first word is sa, and sa means birth. And the mudra for that is the forefinger and the thumb come together. Now, the forefinger represents, and I have it written down here, and that's why I'm looking down, because I don't know these terms. Um, this has to do with Jupiter, and this has to do with knowledge. And this is about birth. And this stimulates the pituitary gland and all the other glands in the body, okay? So that's your Gyan Mudra, Sa. The next one is we move to the next finger, our middle finger, and we touch that, and that is ta. And ta means life. This is our Saturn finger, our middle finger, and it has to do with wisdom and purity, and this is good for detoxing the body. Um, then we go to the um, na, which is our ring fingers on both hands, and that has to uh, do with Uranus, and vitality. So this represents um, death. And this is really has positive effects on our tissues. The last one is ma, and that's our pinkies. And that is our mercury finger. And it has to do with clear communication. And it has to do with um, um, <clears throat> Uh, decreasing the water element in our body, so runny noses, um, runny eyes, and this is the rebirth, and that is what we're actually going through right now, is rebirth. Okay, so, um, boy, the time goes fast. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> I was asked to laugh more, so hopefully that is a healing sound for you. So, if you feel you are in a safe space and can do so, please close your eyes. And bring your hands out in front or at your sides. I'm gonna, I have to raise my hands so you can see my hands. And be intuitive with your body, be intuitive with your breath. You know your body, you know your breath. How do you come into that grounded space at this moment? You know. Listen. Listen to your body. And just touch each finger on each side. Sa, ta, na, na. Sa, ta, na, na. Sa, ta. Na, na, sa, ta, na, na, sa, ta, na, na, sa, ta, na, na. And just continue to do that. And you can also imagine energy coming down into your crown and out your third eye as you're doing this particular Kriya. Sa, ta, na, na. And studies have shown that if you do it for 12 minutes, usually they say 11 minutes, but even just once, even if you do that once a day, just to connect with yourself, connect to all your body parts, it will be a blessing. I think you'll find that it calms you, it calms you. And just, <sighs> I'm so, so thankful for this time with you. May you be happy. May you be well. May you be safe. May you be filled with peace and at ease. Sending you love always.